This tutorial discusses savings and investment in a small open economy and discusses how these savings and investments may be linked to a country's net exports and trade balance. So the context we're looking at is a small open economy. So first we will define what we mean by small open economy. By small, we mean that the economy is a small part of the world economy as a whole and thus it has a relatively minor effect on world interest rates. So as the country is relatively small, changes in the savings or investments within that country are not going to have a large impact on the total world stock of savings or investments. As a result of this, fluctuations will have very little impact on the interest rate, where the interest rate is determined by the total supply of savings and, invest and the total demand for investment. We're also going to assume perfect capital mobility which means that residents of a country can access world financial markets. So residents of our small open economy can borrow and loan money on world markets. And because of this assumption of perfect capital mobility, the interest rate available and prevailing in the small open economy is going to be equal to the world interest rate of or asterisks. So this interest rate prevails on all markets. Essentially, what this means is that residents of the small open economy need never borrow at any higher interest rate above or asterisks. So the actual interaction of investment and savings in the small open economy has no impact on the interest rate. The interest rate is determined exogenously based on world savings and investment. So regardless of the stock of savings or investment in our small open economy, residents of the economy will always be able to borrow at or asterisks. Likewise, residents of the economy need never lend money at interest rates below or asterisks, because they can always go to the world markets and actually earn or asterisks on these markets. So the world interest rate determines the interest rate in our small open economy. And the world interest rate equals the interest rate in our economy. We'll ask what sets this world interest rate? So what determines it? So we know that in a closed economy, the equilibrium of domestic savings and domestic investment determines the interest rate. So if there's no access to outside savings or no option to loan money outside the economy, we must reach this equilibrium savings and investment point, and this determines the interest rate. Now, let's consider the fact that the world economy as a whole is essentially a closed economy. So we can trade within the confines of the world, but that is it we are limited to what is available within the world. Therefore, the equilibrium world interest savings and world investment determines the world interest rate. We essentially think of the world economy as a closed economy. For the small open economy, we consider only a small component of the world economy, and as a result of this, it has a relatively little impact on the world interest rate. So we're essentially going to take the interest rate as exogenously given to our small open economy. It's not determined within the system, and anything the small open economy can do has no impact on the interest rate. Now, let's look at our income and accounting framework and rearrange it so that we get net exports, where net exports are equal to y minus c minus g minus i. What we can do from this is essentially work out more or less consumption and savings. If we look at net exports, we can see that what we have now on the right hand side is savings minus the investment level. Y gives total income. If we take away from that C, Y minus T, which essentially is the proportion of income which consumers spend, and G, which is the proportion portion of income which the government spends, we get a residual or a leftover amount of money. We assume that this leftover amount goes into savings S. So our left hand side is net exports, our right hand side of our equation is savings minus investment. In a closed economy, savings would have to equal investment. In the open economy, because there is access to international markets, Individuals can borrow money or loan money on international markets and our small open economy does not require for savings and investment to equilibration. We will assume for simplicity that savings are independent of the interest rate. So savings can also be dependent on OR, but we will assume that this is not the case in this example for simplicity of calculations. 
the same conclusions can generally be reached when we allow for savings to vary depending on interest rates. This allows us to model a savings as a vertical line as we've done in, in, as we would in subsequent models. Because savings depends on fiscal policy, lower government purchases G or higher taxes T raises national savings. An investment depends on the world interest rate, so a higher interest rate makes some investment projects unprofitable. Therefore, we're going to say the trade balance depends on these variables, so the trade balance will be dependent on investment and on government policy, which can determine savings. Essentially, this table summarizes three outcomes for the open economy and what they can experience. In the case where we have a trade surplus, we have exports greater than imports, net exports therefore are greater than zero. As net exports are greater than zero, our income must be greater than C plus I plus G. So if we remember Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus net exports. If our net exports is positive, this means that the Y component must be greater than our C plus I plus G. As this is the case, savings must be greater than investment. And our net capital outflow is greater than zero, so we are loaning money on the world financial markets. If we look at balance trade, where we have exports equal to imports, our net exports are equal to zero, and Y is equal to C plus I plus G. In this instance, savings exactly equals investment, and our net capital outflows are zero. If we look at trade deficit, the very right-hand column, we see exports, when they're less than imports, we have a trade deficit. This results in net exports being less than zero. If net exports are less than zero, Y is less than C plus I plus G. And therefore, when we calculate out our savings and investment function, we see savings as less than investment. And this results in net capital outflows. So we can see here we have a linkage between net exports and savings and investment. When we compare savings and investment in a small open economy to whether the econ when the economy is closed, we can see that we no longer need an equilibrium rate. So the lower line represents the interest rate if the economy were closed, and this occurs where savings and investment intersect. So it's a closed economy, the total amount of savings must equal the total amount of investment. The world interest rate, however, is exogenously determined. In this example, we can see it's higher than if we were operating under a closed economy framework. This essentially means that we get investment from where the dotted black line representing our asterisk cuts our investment function. We also get savings where this line cuts the savings function. In this example, we can see that investment is now less than savings. So we see S being greater than I. As a result of S being greater than I, the right hand side of our equation, S minus I is positive, implying that our net exports are also positive. That concludes this tutorial. Further tutorials gives examples of how fiscal policy can impact on savings and investment and subsequently on our trade balance. <laughs>